but first, last night you heard where I stand very clearly on the issue of Australia Day and the date of the 26th of January, namely, right alongside the overwhelming majority of people who reject the politics of division and historical revisionism and who see today as a day to give thanks for the privilege it is to grow up in a country like ours. So tonight's editorial isn't going to give the haters any more oxygen for their attempts to hijack a day where we do so much to celebrate those who put back into our communities, and in particular, those 12,000 newest Australians from over 130 nations who today became citizens and in doing so joined the Australian family. It wasn't that long ago that Rosemary Kariuku was in their shoes. Newly arrived as a refugee from Kenya, Rosemary fled violence in her homeland to start again, as so many before her have, here in Australia in the late 1990s. Well, last night, she was honoured in Canberra with Australia's 2021 Local Hero Award. When she spoke, she put pay to the propaganda of the left that ordinary Australians are somehow systemically racist or, at the very least, unwilling to welcome new arrivals. As she told her story last night when Rosemary reached out, she got a lot back in return. I lived in an apartment of 15 families who never looked at me or talked to me. One day I sent each one of them a Christmas card with my name and door number. And from then, everyone stopped to say hi, ask about my culture, and invite me for meals. Everyone even started talking to each other. I would love to see more Australians, those born here, refugees, migrants, anyone who calls Australia home, open their doors to their neighbours. Today is Australia Day, and it's the day to see the good in our country, the good in the institutions that make us so free and fair to fly our flag proudly, and most importantly, to celebrate the contribution that so many of us have made to the nation we are today. Now, I know there's been a lot of debate about the Australian honours, the national awards that recognise contributions people make to our national life today, of course, and later on in the year with the Queen's birthday honours list in June. Now, to be honest, much of the commentary about these awards and how recipients are chosen is ill-informed, and reporters, at least, should know better. But, of course, it's not helped, is it, when a journalist, radio broadcaster Justin Smith, kicked it all off by breaking the embargo and releasing Margaret Court's name late last week as some form of protest, I suspect, against her being awarded our nation's highest award, the AC, or Companion of the Order of Australia. Her award, moving from the AO, which is the award immediately below the AC, so the second highest award, now to the highest, saw a flood of abuse directed towards Mrs Court, as well as a lot of support, wasn't there, from ordinary Australians. It even prompted the ABC's one-time host of the 7.30 report, Kerry O'Brien, to engage in peak virtue signalling by refusing his award today, despite, of course, earlier agreeing to it, as is the former, because he reckons he wouldn't be part of a system that was going to honour Margaret Court. Now, to me, if Kerry O'Brien was worthy of being honoured, and I think he is, he's a leading commentator for many, many decades, as we know, well, Margaret Court is at least as worthy. Not only is she still, to this day, the world's greatest ever female tennis player, but she's devoted her life after sport to serving the community as pastor of a big Perth church that helps everyone, regardless of politics. Now, I don't agree with all of her opinions. I certainly don't agree with all of Kerry O'Brien's either, but the Order of Australia is not there for political views. It's there for service. It's there to recognise people who have gone above and beyond the norm to serve others. Malcolm Turnbull also was rightly honoured because, like him or not, he's led our country. And if you love our country, then all our leaders deserve respect for the service they have given. Never underestimate these awards. 
For one thing, despite what they might say to the contrary, our great and good can't wait to get them. I know, someone who's been lobbied very, very heavily in the past. But fortunately, it's not governments that make these decisions. And again, that's something reporters often get wrong. It's an impartial, apolitical committee that considers nominations that can come forward from anyone. You could nominate someone tomorrow. And it can be anyone who gets these awards. The only criterion is what extraordinary service have nominees given to the Australian community. And despite the abuse that he directed to Margaret Court last week, Premier Daniel Andrews can't possibly have forgotten that there's representatives on this apolitical committee from every state and territory, including his own, that makes these awards. Nor, while I'm at it, will I let him get away with this. Those views which are disgraceful, hurtful and cost lives. Yeah, well, as far as I'm concerned, until you're held to account of the 800 dead on your watch as Premier, you don't get away with a cheap media line like that. But as I said, today's not a day for those who hate our country. It's a day for those who love it. As well as the senior politicians and captains of industry and the many professors and academics who've been honoured today, by far the greatest number of recipients are the hundreds of good and decent people who'd otherwise mostly be unsung, but who today have been singled out as people we're proud of and as role models for the rest of us. Now, I know, as I said, there's always debate about the ACs and the AOs, which are at the officer level, but it's the members and the medal recipients, the AMs and the OAMs, where, for me, my focus always goes first. Indeed, I reckon we should read the list today and on Queen's birthday from the bottom to the top, not the other way around, because you start at the bottom, you really see what our country is made of. People like 88-year-old May Blacker, who's been a resident of Cabago for almost 70 years, who's been selling pies and pot plants for most of last year to raise money for the RFS and to help her local area get back on its feet. And Graham Paul, a Rotary Club president, Bush Tucker Garden project leader, rugby referee, Red Cross, SES and RFS volunteer, an organiser of library books for schools in PNG and convener of the Chemistry Olympia, Olympiad. So much more than all of that, but gosh, that's enough, isn't it? He lost his fight with cancer a few months ago before his award. He was a recipient today and I know it was something his family hold dear. All up, 845 people on the list of today's recipients. Maybe 50 or 60 of them you'll have heard of. Maybe 20 or 30 you might have an opinion about. There might even be a few that you don't agree with. Still, I challenge anyone to go through that list and not feel some sense of pride in our country where so many of us do so much, not because they have to, but because they choose to. So many people out there striving to make this country even better, not for money, but for love. So many that you'd never really know about if you ran across them in the street, would you? But who help make this country great because they think of others before themselves. So tonight on Australia Day, here's to all of them. But most of all today, here's to our country, because there really is no better place in the world.